Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we should take a look at a few basic concepts related to matrix algebra. So we'll start by looking at the determinant of a matrix. So first of all, all of the matrices involved in this course uh, are real. So we have, we do not deal with complex numbers anywhere in this course. So the determinant of a square K by K matrix A with its, uh, with its elements a, i, j, right, um, denoted by, so this is the notation for determinant of a. So the determinant, so if k is equal to 1, right, so determinant of a is just the first element or its only element a11. But if k is greater than 1, then the determinant is given by this formula. So you're summing over j from uh, from 1 to k and then you look at or you evaluate this expression. This a1j here, so the small a1j, this is the element in this matrix A. This capital a1j is a k minus 1 by k minus 1 matrix obtained by deleting the first row and the jth column. So a1j, that means we delete the first row and jth column and then we get a new matrix that we'll denote as a1j it has dimensions k minus 1 by k minus 1 so let's try to understand this formula a little better uh, with an example so here is the formula and say we have a 2 by 2 matrix right so let's try to calculate the determinant of this uh, matrix a so determinant of A is equal to, so let's follow this. So J is equal to 1, so A11 times determinant of A11 times minus 1 raised to 1 plus J. J is equal to 1, so we have again 1 plus 1. Um, so the first term is over. Then J is equal to 2, so we'll get A12 times determinant of A12 times minus 1 raised to 1 plus 2. So A11 is a matrix that's formed by deleting the first row and the first column. If we delete that, we're left with the number A22, and that's what I have here. And then minus 1 raised to 2 is just 1. Then we have A12. So this matrix A12, you can get it by deleting the first row and the second column. So first row and second column, you're left with this number A21. So that's what we have here. So this gives us the formula, right? So determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is just A11 times A22 minus A12 times A21, right? So we are familiar with this formula and this can be obtained from this expression. So here is a 3 by 3 matrix, right? So again, k is equal to 1 gives us this first term. So now A11 is a matrix obtained by removing the first row, right? So let's see, you remove the first row. Mm. Let's start the pen here. Yeah, so remove the first row and the first column and you're left with uh, this matrix here. Uh, then K is equal to 2, so you get A12. Then A1J is going to be the matrix obtained by removing the first row and the second column. So you get A21, A23, A31 and A33. And finally, we put k is equal to 3, remove the first row and the third column to get this matrix. So now, uh, we, we saw in the previous slide how to calculate determinants of a 2 by 2 matrix, right? So we can directly plug in the formula for determinant of 2 by 2 matrix and um, we get this expression for determinant of this matrix A. So now let's take a look at the inverse of a matrix. So inverse of a square matrix A denoted by A inverse, right, A raised to minus 1 is, 
is a matrix such that this particular relation is satisfied. So if you pre-multiply A by its inverse or you post-multiply A by its inverse, the result should be the identity matrix. So here is an example. So if I ask you to verify that this particular matrix is the inverse of this, you will verify that this relation holds true. So first we will check that A inverse times A is the identity, that is this. So if you multiply, if you pre-multiply this matrix, right, so this is A in this case. So if you pre-multiply it by the inverse, you get identity and you can verify that if you post-multiply, you still get the identity matrix. So next, let's take a look at the orthogonal matrix. So a square matrix Q is orthogonal if and only if Q transpose Q or Q times Q transpose is identity. And if you uh, remember the definition of the inverse, this also means that inverse of Q is Q transpose, right? So this is an important implic uh, implication of orthogonality um, that Q inverse is basically just Q transpose. So this is an example of an orthogonal matrix. So if you look at A transpose A, right, and if you actually carry out the multiplication, you'll see that this is identity. And if you also compute A times A transpose, you will see that is also an identity matrix. So eigenvalues, so eigenvalues and eigenvectors play a very important role in this course. So make sure you're uh, comfortable with both of these concepts. So we have a matrix A that is K by K. Then the numbers lambda 1 through lambda K that satisfy this polynomial equation. What does this mean? This is determinant of A minus lambda times I is for the identity matrix. So all of the numbers that satisfy this equation are called as eigenvalues of A. So I have this matrix A, let's try to find its eigenvalues. So remember we have to solve this equation. So if I do, if I look at determinant of A minus lambda equal to zero, right? So this gives me this. So I have one minus lambda times three minus lambda equals to zero. So let's find the roots of these equations, right? So this means that lambda is one or lambda is three. Right, so we have two possible uh, possible roots. So lambda, so let's call it as lambda one, right? That's the first, uh, so first root is one, and the second root is three. The first eigenvalue is one, and the second eigenvalue is three. So now let's look at eigenvectors. So we have a k by k matrix, and we have its eigenvalue to be lambda. If x is a non-zero vector such that this equation is satisfied, so a x is equal to lambda x, this is how you find eigenvectors, okay? Then x is an eigenvector of a. So we have a, we have its eigenvalue lambda. If any non-zero x satisfies this equation, then it is an eigenvector of a. So again we have a, let's try to find its eigenvectors. So remember, we want to solve ax equal to lambda x. So let's start with the first eigenvalue, that was 1. So uh, this is the equation, right? So I've just plugged in value, um, matrices for a. Um, and lambda 1 is 1 here. So if you solve this, so you'll get x1, right, is equal to x1. And the other equation you get is um, this x1 plus 3x2 is equal to x2. And I put this 3x2 on the other side. I get x1 is minus 2x2. So I'm trying to find, right, solutions for this. x1 is x1 and x1 is equal to minus 2x2. So if you think about it, there are this has several solutions, right? There is no unique solution for this set of equations. Uh, so this is one possibility that um, x1 is minus 2 and x2 is 1. 
Um, so in that case, this is the first eigenvector x1. So remember the first coordinate x1 is minus 2. So I write that first x2 is the second coordinate. So remember here x1 was the first coordinate, x2 is the second coordinate. So my eigenvector is minus 2 comma 1. Another possibility is I plug in x2 is equal to minus 1, which gives me x1 as 2. And this is the other possibility. So note that the signs between these two eigenvectors are switched. So I want to point out here that many times if you calculate eigenvectors in R, right, you might get different signs and that's because of this. So you might choose this vector, right, as your eigenvector, but R might give this output. So if, this, if your signs are different, then those from R output do not be very surprised, right, expected. This is another possible solution, right? So make sure that you can that you verify that these are the solutions of these equations. It's not very hard to do. And I can again flip the signs and I get this as another possibility. So I can keep on going, right? There are many, many, infinitely many solutions actually. But I'm just going to pick these four, right? So these are all eigenvectors because they satisfy this particular equation. So next we shall look at the norm or the Euclidean norm of a vector. So if I have a vector and suppose it has two elements, x1, x2, then its norm, which is denoted by this, so we have two lines on each side of x, this means the norm of x and is defined as square root of x1 square plus x2 square. Another way to write it is square root of x transpose x, right? So this is the formula for the Euclidean norm. And if you divide each element of a vector by its norm, then the norm of the new vector will be 1. So what I mean is, if I have this new vector y, which is x divided by norm of x, what is x divided by norm of x? Is basically you divide the first element by the norm and the second element in x by the norm. So now if I try to compute the norm of this vector y, it will be 1. So let's see. So norm of y, right, square root of the square of the first element, right? So look at this formula, square root of the square of the first element, I have that, plus a square of the second element. And it turns out that you get norm x by norm x cancels out, you get 1. So if you want to normalize your vectors, right, if you want a vector such that the norm is 1, you just divide the, each element in the vector by, the, uh, by its norm. So it's important to keep this in mind because we will be looking at or we will be using this trick to standardize our eigenvectors. So it's usual practice, right? So like I said, there are so many possibilities of eigenvectors. So it is a good idea that you just want to divide the eigenvector by its norm, right? So the eigenvectors will have norm of one. So just for practice, this was the, uh, uh, the vector that we were uh, dealing with earlier. So we know that the first eigenvector was minus two comma one. So norm of this turns out to be square root of 5, right? Square root of 2 square plus 1, which is 5. So the standardized eigenvector, that's E1. So E1 is the standardized eigenvector, is what? Divide the first element by square root of 5, the second element by square root of 5. And uh, if you, um, so these numbers basically is just this, right? If you, This is the decimal representation of the fractions. So similarly, the second vector still has norm 5. You standardize the eigenvector. Now I'm calling it as E2. Um, so it looks like this. So, so note that uh, these two eigenvectors have flipped signs, right? Or different signs. X3, if I normalize it now, right? So X3 has this norm square root of 45. I normalize this. So this ends up being the same as E1. So eigenvector E3 ends up being the same as E1 
and if I look at E4, if you normalize it or if you, if you divide by the norm, it is going to be the same as E2. So if you do this uh, normalization or standardization or whatever you want to call it, you will not have infinitely many options for eigenvectors. You'll have only two candidate options remaining, right? So R is going to give you the standardized outputs. Uh, again, the sign may be different from the one that you choose, right? So this is about the norm of eigenvectors. So that's all for this video. There's definitely more stuff on matrix algebra that we need to uh, consider before we can start looking at the details of principal component analysis. However, I will tell you about those in the next video. Bye.